Welcome to B-Roll. My name is Cyril Zuma. I am a commercial photographer and contributor at Color Space. Color Space is an authentic African stock content platform designed for creatives to basically submit their content and make money. So you know on B-Roll I bring amazing guests and on today's, on today's episode I have an amazing guest who we did do an interview over the phone, uh, sort of using Anchor and it didn't work out so well. And now we are here recording from Duma Collective who, you know, I want to say a shout out to Sibu firstly for allowing us to record here, for giving us this safe space for us to record. And for, if you want to guess, you know, um, Duma Collective is a woman-dominated business and you can definitely guess today I have a woman sitting across me. She has the biggest grin right now. <laughs> she is my favorite. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sipo Gazi. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you, Sarah? How are you? I cannot complain at all. I am glad to have you here. We, I know. We tried to record and it yeah. didn't work. Round two, baby, round two. Uh, round but even two. better, yes. Second time for luck. Second time. Second time for luck, man. For luck. So, for those who don't know who Sipo Gazi is, can you tell us a little bit about who Sipo Gazi is? I don't want to introduce you. I would rather allow you to introduce yourself. I don't even know how to introduce myself. Okay, but uh, Sipogazi Marvate, that's my name and my surname. Uh, my brand name, I call myself as Sipogazi Visual and Mind, so SVM. Um, residing now in Johannesburg, I am, I, I will call myself a junior photographer. Still learning, but I am a photographer uh, doing black and white. Okay. Um, but, you know, learning myself to do color. Um, I currently work with uh, Austin Malema at RTC Studios. Can you tell us a little bit about the RTC Studios and how you got into them? Because I remember you sending me a DM once uh, asking to work and I didn't know who this person was. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to do this whole Look, shoot and shadow me. I am not afraid to go into other photographers' DMs, hey? Okay. Like, if I want to work with you, I'll make sure that you pay attention to me. You sure. know what I mean? Uh, no, same thing as you. That's what I did with him. Um, so I did put out a DM to Austin saying that, Yo, can I just shadow you or can I work with you or something like that? And look, he came through, you know? Yeah. He came through and I'm currently just learning behind everybody that works at RCC Studios with Tapelo, with Tepo and with Austin. Sounds like a big team and it sounds like you guys you know, are always doing amazing work. Before we go there, I, I want to find out how your journey in the photography industry started first. Okay. No, you know, it started very late. Okay. Um, okay, with the early vibes, started when, let's say, when I was young, we're talking about probably like 12 years of age, but I was playing with the camera because I've been introduced with, uh, from my grandfather who loved um, taking pictures because he used to travel. Um, no, but it started late when I was like 18, 19, when I studied um, method acting. Wait, how old are you now? I'm 28. Okay. Yeah. So you at it. Look, look, I look very young. Yeah. But <laughs> you do. Yeah. No, it started when I was 18, when I used to work at iStore, my okay. retail shop. And you know, with iPhone photography, I really loved just taking random pictures. Sure. Um, and I told myself, okay, through method acting, let me just be behind the scenes. What is method acting? Actually? So method acting is, uh, you basically, it takes, like, they give you a character and okay. you have to know the character, develop it at least within probably like three to four months. So you basically like take your soul out and put another soul inside. Is this, is this an animation? Is this a real life no, thing? No, like real life it? thing. Okay. Like, you know, like Batman the Joker, yeah. the late um, Joker, yeah. he does method acting. Lady Gaga does method acting. So okay. that's why you see her roles are just one of those difficult roles, but it comes out great. So you started out in method acting? Then? Yes, for four years. I started okay. out in method acting. And then, but within the method acting, they taught us how to direct and how to take stills. And then I really enjoyed it then. So then I told myself, let me be behind the scenes. Sure. I chose to be behind the scenes with it. So with photography, um, it's been five years. Okay. Um, the two years, though, it was hobby just to find my way 
through it. Um, started out with black and white. Okay. And then um, decided to open the social platforms, decided to open Instagram. And I placed my photos, phone photos, not even camera photos, sure. phone photos on Instagram. Yeah. And then I started following you guys, then said, okay, let me shop out the DMs yeah. and see how it goes. And so were you, start, we were, were you in iStore? Were you studying? When you I was doing both. You, so you were doing both at the yes. same time? Yeah, I was doing both. So day, iStore, and night, method activity. And uh, at iStore, you were working as a consultant? I was what? working as a consultant, okay. yes. Part time consultant, yes. Oh, wow. So you do come with uh, technology knowledge too? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's where I also actually won the iStore um, competition, okay. the December competition. And that's where I actually know Bo Andile Bala. Because yes. he also, he's been pushing me yes. to take photography as full time. Yes. He actually like pushed me to actually decide to quit my job. You know, it's so crazy. You are the second, I think you're the second person that has mentioned Andy Lebala. Yeah, he's pushing them to look, number one, win the competition and also... Like, he is one of the best photographers in South Africa. Like, inside yeah, out. No doubt He's a that. brother. Yeah. I, he's, he's literally like my brother. That's like so he's been, yeah. When I'm low, I know Instagram DMs. He motivates me, and he makes sure like he gives me ideas of, um, I should sell my prints because I know he's been selling. Um, quite interesting that he hasn't. He doesn't really um shoot much. He just sells his prints, sure. and I find it quite inspiring. No, but he's one of the greatest creatives ever. He really is. Hamon yeah. X once told me a story about him winning the iPhonography competition. He also did, yeah, yes. And that kick-starting his career. So how was that winning the competition for you? Was that the kickstarter of your career? Not even. You know, I didn't even really pay much attention to that. I still for, I, like, I saw the website. Sure. And quite funny story, I went to the toilet <laughs> at iStore. I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the toilet because what I do is when I go to the toilet to tea break, in between that, I literally just walk out. Like, I go out of the mall, I just walk and then find inspiration. So with that photo, I went to the toilet. Then I came out and I saw, like, a window by the toilet. I took a picture sideways. And then, because I also write, I wrote, I think I wrote about something deep, something like prison-like deepness. Sure. And then I saw this, um, the competition while I was waiting for customers and I decided to just apply and I forgot about it totally like I forgot <laughs> then I moved on with my life yeah. then uh, I think one of the mornings opened my emails and then I saw that I won and I was like okay what did I win <laughs> then I went in I was like okay this is legit I don't know if it was legit so I showed my boss I was like is this legit like yeah. can I get my ice store voucher it was what was it, it was a thousand rands can I get my ice store voucher and it was legit I was like oh my god guys I actually want something <laughs> and yeah so that was the a funny story of it and that's how you uh, started really yeah yeah that's how it is I it it boosted me to actually continue sure and then that's when I decided to connect with Andile. Sure. And he actually pushed me on taking it full time. And then, yeah, then I took it full time. This is about five years ago. Is it? No, no, no. 2018. 2018? Yeah. Shucks, you've been doing amazing work. We just spoke now offline. You know, I've been meaning to, do, to chat to you about this one. You had a shoot with David Beckham. Can you tell me that experience? Because, you know, it's, it's such an amazing thing. I've always, David Beckham was always in my pictures in my bedroom. Yeah. Like, I'm a fan of his. Like, I'm a huge fan of his. And you got to photograph him and be around him. How Not photograph him. I mean, Austin did it. Sure. Shout out Austin. Sure. I just helped him. Sure. But I didn't know that we were shooting. Because when he said, um, what did he say? He said, uh, if I'm available, I said, okay. But he didn't tell me we were shooting. Okay. So I just saw that they were shooting David Beckham on the day. Sure. And I was just shook. I just started shook. But no, it's been awesome. It was only awesome because firstly, he's such a humble guy. Sure. So he's really a normal human being, David Beckham. <laughs> like he'll greet everyone before we start kind of thing. Um, yeah, it was such a beautiful moment. Easy, stress-free. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like... It was amazing yeah, how, just to be with him. How has the transition been? Because now you're going from, 
you know, throwing your shots in the DMs to now shooting with one of the biggest stars. How has that transition been for you in, a, let's say, in the past five years? It's still so real. Still Let so me real. just say. Yeah. yeah, it's still so real. I still haven't woken up to... Because I, I didn't... Re, I, I never thought that I'd be where I am. You know, I never... I thought, okay, no, with what I'm going to study, I'm going to continue it, you know. But I never thought that... A, a, a company like that would hire me because sure. there's so many great creatives. There's so many. And it's like, okay, I don't know why they picked me. I'm so basic. But, you know, I'm learning to be one of the greatest like they are. Sure. Let me just say. But it's still so real to me. Um, look, every day is a learning and inspiring, you know, day. I take a day at it as it comes. Yeah. Um, I just like to see other people's work, get inspired from it, and then see if I can do such things or even better. Look, getting in the industry as a photographer is, you know, especially now, I think the industry is a bit saturated, but getting in the industry as a black female photographer surely is a bit of a... Um, it's tough. It, it is tough. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I mean, you know, the industry is filled with a lot of black males um, and also, you know, there are white males too. How is it being a black female in the industry? Look, it's very tough. I think, truthfully, I do get very demotivated. Um, I don't get inspired by a lot of male creatives. I really don't. I get inspired by a lot of female creatives. And unfortunately, I've not seen... Um, I only know one that that's like they know that's in the industry. Unfortunately, she is um, white, but she's doing great. Um, Ingrid. Yes, yes. So I only know that person. Um, there's a lot that I can name, like there's Zuzi, there's Basitana, Manulek. You know, Zuzi is great. I didn't know that she did like the river, um, the river cover. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, why, why isn't she being praised? The current know? cover. Yeah. Oh, wow. Why isn't she being praised, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's so many female photographers that I wish can be out of the limelight. And who are your favorite at the moment now? Jeez. It can, um, can be, it can be, it can be women or it can be, you know, just other photographers. In so, general. in Paris, there is a, a photographer called Alex Ray. Alex Ray. Yes. Um, Raven, of course, United States. Um, who does the celebrities, but Big Sean and stuff. Yeah. Um, Alex Ray does the Vogue. Oh, does she? Yes, so she does Vogue uh, photography. Interesting. Okay. Um, Zuzi as well. Um, Basitana, yeah. who's part of Lempost, does amazing photography. Um, yeah, look, there's so many. I don't know. Like, even Black Milk, L. I know oh, she's yes. killing it. Oh, yes. She, um, she's been doing absolutely amazing look, work. I've been watching, you know, them working with Wadi and it's, it's yeah, like, no, oh. she's you know, photographers like that, and they're not being in the limelight, which frustrates me the most. Um, Do you think people are shy? What, what, what's the problem? Do you know what? What is it? Because. I do know for a fact when I created the, the black photographers uh, groups on Twitter, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a black women photographers group and there's so many of them. You know, it's, it's, it was shocking to me that no, so many exist. It's not even, I don't think it's about, about being shy. Um, I think it's unfortunately, it's male photographers will only support male photographers. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a genuine thing, sure. you know. You will back up. I know even in my company, you'll back up the male photographers. You know, unfortunately, with me myself, I have to back up female photographers. But it's very seldom that women creators don't really back each other up or support each other. But it's also like, how do we do that? It's not about, it's not that if some creative come to me that I'm negative. No, it's, 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 it's being shy to approach one another, let me just say. Sure. How, so how do, yes. we, how do we move forward from this space? Because, again, we said there's so many you know, female photographers, spe specifically black um, female photographers, and it's just not being recognized much. How do we move? Um, look, at first I'd, I was going to say I think it's about time that male photographers should acknowledge also females, but I also think it's important that us females should break the eyes of actually approaching one another okay. you know like for example 
let's start a, a WhatsApp group, let's start, I don't know, a social media platform, a safe space for other female creatives. And we're not also talking about photography, we're talking about maybe like directors or whatnot, you know, for females. Let us just create a safe space for us, build each other, uh, build each other up and whichever job that you know you are not comfortable in doing, pass it on to other female creatives to do that. Um, I think that's where it can start. Let us, ourselves, approach one another and we'll build it from there. Hello, this is Sipagazi Visual Mind. Um, this is B-Roll with the greatest photographer, Cyril Zuma. Please stay tuned. I know you'll love this video. Thank you. I think that is absolutely vital. That is super important. We see brands uh, supporting a lot of, you know, the, the, the male guys. And we, you know, um, if I want to go back to the brand that I don't want to mention that did a blunder quite a while back, you know, they, from what I see, they're supporting quite a lot of male photographers. And I think it's super important that, you know, they start looking at female photographers because they, they, some of, most of the work that's being created is by female photographers, whether it's in the back end and maybe the male photographer is shooting. But just like you were involved in a David Beckham shoot in the back end, you were, you were instrumental in making sure that image comes to life. Same as Zuzi, you know, having making sure that the river the cover is, is, is immaculate. These things are super important. What do you think brands can also do to play in this space a little bit better? Because it is, it is a little bit disappointing not seeing as many faces as they should be. I think brands should, number one, acknowledge and really take the risk. The problem is they don't take risks okay. in hiring um, great creatives. So, uh, unfortunately, I've heard someone that not everyone is going to get the bag because you too focus on supporting your friend, yeah. you know, and you could find that you know this other creative or you don't know them, but you can see that your vision, they can do it. Sure. You know, I think also that's important, like take risk on hiring other creatives because you never know it might, your vision might even be more greater what they what you didn't expect but you like that vision than having to hire the same creative and unfortunately when you hire the same creative that person also becomes comfortable in doing the same thing they're not building in being the better photographer for themselves but they're only comfortable in doing the same thing because that's what you like that's what the brand likes and that's what they put out there you know do you think we're just creating for the bag um Right now, we are creating for the back just because we need the back to survive. Um, if it wasn't for, uh, let's say, if it wasn't for, for, for example, let's say pandemic, I think we would have been creating for ourselves creatively. Sure. Yeah. But because of such thing happened, we do need the bag, unfortunately, to survive. But also now we need to have we need to pause on that and really be creative for ourselves sure that's how we're gonna get inspired so going from booked to basically not being booked during lockdown how has COVID affected you and how you work it has affected me negatively i won't lie okay um simply because well firstly because i don't have my own equipment so I have to try and hustle that equipment. But also it's like um, not being booked has really taken a toll on me. Because um, sometimes not being booked, you, you don't know how to be creative, you know? You don't know, you, you give up on yourself as like, am I even worthy of continuing this journey? Yeah. Sometimes even one booking can help you be creative because you've done the booking and now it's like, okay, okay, I have it in me, so let me do something even though I haven't been booked. But no, it has affected me negatively with my mental um, health. Um, but slowly but surely, I am becoming positive. So let's hope it's from there onwards that I'm going to start being booked individually because I really want to be... in. Uh, being built individually and not really through the company sure. um, because I do have a dream that maybe someday in my 30s 
that I will also open my own company, female dominated, yeah. female creatives. I think that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. I think that's a brilliant idea. Please do. Yeah. Please do. Austin, if you are also listening and watching, please make sure that you do push Sipogazi to get to the level where she needs to get to because it's such an important role that she's wanting to play right now. And, you know, like us recording right now at Duma Collective, which is in a, a, a women-owned business, for me, Look, it a super it's one of the greatest things. Like, this, you know, Sibu has done one of the most brilliant jobs. Yeah. And she's still doing it, where she hires just female-dominated. And I could imagine, like, every day they get inspired from one another. That's me. That's my one dream is to go into a studio where it's literally just females. Sure. You know, just to... Because, yeah, guys, females, the way they're so creative, they've got so many ideas, and it's just like, wow. Like, on, um, with uh, Basita and I went to one of the shoots, it's just a beautiful moment to witness, you know? And that's what I want in the future. Being able to work with one another in female spaces. Yeah. I think that's, that's very much important. So going back to... COVID and um, how it affected you and how you work. Now that we're in level five, or are we even in any level right now? You know, I, I think we can. The, the, country is wide, the country is wide open. You know, how do you think um, us as photographers should be moving? Or how, what are your plans, actually? I don't have a plan. Um, my plans creatively, I think, to... Um, my plans creatively, I think I want my 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 images to be in a in a type of uh, cinematic kind of aspect. Okay. Um, also with regards, to, I want to tell a story. I want to go back to telling a story with my images. Um, I don't want to do lifestyle or anything. So I want to focus on telling a story, especially I want to document um, just interesting people. I I believe every person has a story to tell. You know. Sure. So I want to capture those moments. Um, I, just take a day it's, as it goes, you know. Um, I want to really just be more creative for myself and not for anyone else, you know. I want to try and block. Look, bookings will come in, which will be great. So I want bookings, but I want them to book me because of what they see. Sure. Yes. So now, going from a space of... Um, wanting to create work for yourself and also trying to get the bag at the same time. What does it mean then being a creative to you at this time? Oof. What does it mean to be a creative? Yeah, because I mean, I look at it and like, you know, there's, there's a bag and then there's doing it for yourself. And, you know, what does it mean being a creative at this time so, now, balancing the two? I think every creative, every photographer wants the bag for what they really do, sure. which is very seldom. Because yeah. now we're doing, we're getting bags for things that we don't really, you know, really like to do, sure. but because it's just, we need the bag. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to get the bag for what I really, really want to do, sure. you know, which is very seldom. Yeah. So I try to be creative just for the sake of my mental health for the sake of my happiness. Because I would find that, okay, I'm doing this, but I'm not really enjoying it, but I want to keep the client happy. Mm -hmm. And maybe through having the positive um, feedback from them, they will book me again from what I, what I, what I want to do, sure. the images that they see. Which is telling stories. Exactly. So which platforms uh, would you suggest for Telling stories a little bit better as a creative right now, visual, visually. Um, I know we spoke earlier on about, you know, Twitter and Instagram. And yes. Then, you know, you alluded to Behance being another platform yes. that's possibly a go-to for creatives. I think it is a go-to for creatives. Um, I don't think Twitter and Instagram are really go-to for creatives. I think for Instagram, get a lifestyle. You know, Twitter, it's a bunch of people that have their own opinions. Um, Behance and Visco Cam, I think those two are a go-to for creatives. For producers, look, directors, everything. Um, that way, it does inspire, I know it inspires me, um, Behance and Visco Cam, simply because that's where I get noticed 
from other creatives. This way I know other photographers worldwide. Sure. This way you see pictures that you really want to do and you're like, oh my God. Like, I didn't know this was possible, but it is possible. Yeah. So let me continue. Although, luckily with me, I used to get touched with regards to followings and likes and stuff. And I know through Behance and, Visu and um, Visco Cam, you don't really get those things. But because of people don't really invest in those. I um, think it's really important that love your images, love your art, yeah. and put it out there. Don't worry about your likes and stuff. It will come to you. So tell me about, you've seen both sides of the coin, you know, having um, somebody with numbers in front of you around you and also then looking at people without the numbers around you and you both creating the amazing work what advice would you give to somebody who you know who feels that social media is basically the way to go and this the one that's the only way to get bookings it is the only way to get bookings um my advice is really really don't give up yeah I think for creatives, it's so easy to give up. I myself have given up so many times. Yeah. There was a part where a month I, haven't, I just don't shoot, you know, because I'm just like, then what is the use? Um, really don't give up on yourself. Um, look, they say if there's one person that really loves your images, that is enough. Because that one person has definitely understands and is truly inspired by your art. Yeah. You know, it's just not that comment where love it, keep going. It's they really explain that how this image has inspired them. I've had one person, which I'll never forget, who literally wrote a whole poem on one of my images. Wow. And that's it. That inspires me to keep going. Because they looked at that photo and they're like, oh my God, I wrote this poem because your image inspired it, you know. Don't give up. Always create. And also, please, please, guys, I know some creatives, they get demotivated because they look at other creators of work and they look at the followings and likes and they're like, okay, what am I doing wrong? You know, I feel like don't get demotivated by other creatives. Look at other creatives and get motivated to become even better than them. Yeah. Reach out to them. You know, that's how I reach out to you. Yeah. I reach out to any other <laughs> photographers. Reach out to them, you know. You might never know. They, are, they can help you. Mm. And that's all you need. It's really help you on your images. Reach out to even the greatest photographers because they really can. I know I reach out to that um, Alexa Ray on uh, the Vogue photographer where I was demotivated. And I was, I was demotivated because I was like, there's so many male-dominated photographers. I even reached out to Zuzi. And they came out with positive feedback. And that's all you need to do to keep going. So don't give up on yourself and reach out to other creators. I think that's a super important message, specifically on reaching out to other creatives. Um, I know that you know the industry now, the way I look at it is we're all working in silos. And I really loved what you guys did with RTC because you know um, coming together as creatives, uh, creative minds, and to create this amazing and beautiful work just works out 10 times better. For any photographer who's listening, get yourself an assistant, be their assistant, reach out to somebody, work with more people. Um, it'll only elevate you and make you a bit better. It will also make the industry a, a much, much stronger. Well, how do you stay on top of your game? You look, I just simply look at other creators. I really look at other photographers. I especially look at the photographers that inspire me, like your Anne Libovitz, um, who is that? Your your Ingrid, your Brandon. Like I just look at every other creative, and I I create a moon board. Yeah, I just create a moon board. Even images on Pinterest. Oh, yes. You know, just go to Pinterest, create your own moon board. Um, see if I can recreate that, or even remix it and make it my taste. Um, research on what I need, what type of model I need, I guess, and yeah, just take. Or I just decide, okay, this day I'm just going to get lost in Johannesburg or Pretoria and take pictures of ordinary people or, you know, nature and whatever. That's how I stay on top of my game. So basically shooting all the time, being out there, playing with the camera, that's you staying at the top of your game. Yes. That's amazing. So 
looking at now all the work that you've done, who inspires you um, in the industry or even outside of the industry? Locally or? Any, it could be anyone. It even could be, you know, an aunt, a mom. It could be anybody. You know, the God, the God of photography, Annie Libovitz is the one that inspires me. That woman, look, ah, her photography game is, is too much. It's too much. I see her videos on YouTube and she's got... Look, the masterclass that she yes, did yes. was amazing, yeah. you know. Um, another person that really inspires me is... Uh, who else? Um, Raven from uh, United States actually also inspires me. I just like how she takes pictures of the artists there. Um, yeah. Gosh, a lot of people. Um, people from, that are actually not famous, but they're also from United States. I know there's a film photographer with, who is Nathan on Twitter. I think I know Nathan. Yes. And there's one, another name called Kish, who did this amazing, so he takes photos of um, events, but artists that do country music. Okay. Oh, amazing. Those are the type of the people that really inspire me because I can see that they do what the things that make them happy, that inspires them. They do what they want to do and yeah. not what other people want to see, you know. Um, like your Nathan did a whole yeah. wedding on film, wow. literally. And then just like, dude, you didn't do it on digital. You just did it on film. <laughs> Yeah. Like, please balance me on that situation. <laughs> you know, it's a huge risk. <laughs> and it came out amazing. He's probably one of the greatest film photographers ever. Yeah. You know, that will ever exist for me. Yeah. So those are the type of photographers that really do inspire me. Because they do something very different. And what are your plans um, for the future? I don't know what are my plans for the future. I try not to think about the future. Okay. But... The main, main plan, I just want to master in editing in color, because I know that is my weakest, Austin knows that. <laughs> and then go back to being the black and white photographer. I really just want to push that, you know. What, what, what's the obsession with the black and white? Um, I do know that, you know, now we live, we live in color and we hardly see any black and white. Yes. So I believe that black and white, you can really see the emotion of your subject you really, really see what they're going through yeah. than taking color, you know. Anyone can do color, yes. Um, I just feel like when you see color, you really just look at the dopeness of it. Yeah. But when you see black and white, you really just feel the image itself. You actually do take time and sit back and be like, wow. You know, you understand what this image is going through. Yeah. Yeah. They do say that uh, when you photograph somebody in black and white, you photograph their soul. You really do photograph their soul. Mm. Like, you really do it. And yeah. it's so easy to write a story on black and white. Like, it's so beautiful. It just, there's just something positive when writing a story or po uh, a, a poetry coming from a black and white image. And you did mention earlier on that you also do poetry. Yes. Yeah, I knew that you did poetry. Yes. Are you planning on linking the two up together at some point? Yes, yes. So I need to revamp my Instagram page, yeah. which I am. I'm going to actually go back to that, where I will link my images to just the short poem that I normally write. We got into that image, yeah. Sipokazi, it's been interesting chatting to you. You've given me so much information. I do feel like every time I do interview you, I get to know you even better. And B-roll sessions are really about that, me getting to know you and hopefully um, the rest of the listeners getting to know you. What advice would you have uh, or last words do you have for people listening? Um, I'm going to direct this to especially women creatives. Guys, can we get out there, you know? Yeah. Can we like inspire each other can we actually reach out to each other so we can create one of the most beautiful images or one of the most beautiful beautiful movies short stories um look i think this industry needs more women so can we please do the things that needs to be done and don't give up on yourself for all creatives just don't give up on yourself because it's a very tough it's a tough journey that we've taken upon you know being 
doing arts is very tough. So just don't give up on yourself and make sure you take care of yourself first with regards to mental issues and mental health. And yeah, just be inspired every day. Try to be inspired every day. Try to create every day. Even if it's the smallest thing, try to create. Um, you don't need to create, uh, you don't need to, for example, take pictures of people. You can take pictures of, I don't know, your whole bedroom or, you know, a plant or something. Um, yeah, uh, build, develop yourself, look at YouTube videos and uh, take it from there. Take one step at a time. That's all I can say. So how can we get a hold of you? How can we stay in touch with you? Um, hopefully for a collaboration to book you also. Um, please uh, go into my Instagram page, which is Sipogazi Visual Mind. Um, from there on, you can also DM me on my social platforms on Instagram. Twitter, same thing, Sipza Visual Mind. Or just simply email me at SVM photostudios at gmail.com and that's how you can reach through me and who knows we take it from there and I'll probably give you my personal number <laughs> well thank you so much Sipo guys it's been an amazing chat thank you for allowing me into your life allowing me into your creative process I always say this to you I feel like you and I don't chat enough I feel like this we don't we this, should do it more often we man. definitely should and I feel like this was short so we'll definitely catch up again. I know that you got more wins coming your way. And I'm really proud of you. You know, you've been doing amazing work. I remember when you when you came into my DMs and, yeah. you, and you said, you know, you want you want to do this photography thing. Yeah. And to see you actually not just talking about it, but actually working hard to get to where you are. Well done for you. And I think uh, a lot of us are proud of what you do. A lot of us um, want to work with you. I am trying to book a shoot, a PR shoot with um, oh. RTC. Uh, so Please do. So hopefully uh, you'll be behind the camera. Please do. <laughs> but tell me, do me. Let's do this, man. Oh, even collaborate for fun, G. For sure. Yeah. I look forward to that. Thank you so much for coming to Biro. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Finally, we do this. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see it. Thank you, Sir Zuma. Cool. Till next time. Cheers, guys. Bye.